In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Are you convinced that prayer has an impact? Unfortunately, doubting that it does is the cause of our weakness. A youth once told me, Is everything to you prayer? Is it really going to do everything? I was quiet for a moment and then told him, It will do everything. So he got more annoyed. I didn't intend to frustrate him. He just sees that all we say for everything is prayer. For every problem we say pray. For every sin we say pray. For every bit of advice and loss we say pray. People want us to say something else. However, we're not being facetious. Prayer truly does everything in life. Everything can be done with prayer. If someone places their trust in prayer, they will see its impact. Trust means faith. There is a close bond between faith and prayer. If you don't believe, you will not receive. If you don't believe in the power of prayer, you will not receive. This is what we'll talk about now. A beautiful verse in Luke 11 says, All who ask, receive. All. As soon as you come across this word all, think a bit. The word all that is in the Bible is a story all to itself. If the Lord said all, then there is no exception. Because there are no exceptions. It means you are included in this all. What does this mean? If you just say, Lord, you're aware of this verse, then you will receive. He didn't say what you would receive, but you will receive. Do you believe that every time you pray, you receive something, or do you not believe? This is the promise. God does not just say empty words. Everything he says is accurate and true. All who ask, receive. All who knock, the door will be opened. There are two other topics that we'll talk about at another time. Don't ask, when will the door be opened? He didn't say. Or, what will he give? He didn't say. He did say, all who speak to me, I will respond. And all who seek, will receive. I don't know what they will receive. And all who knock, the door will be opened. I don't know when. No one can say, I prayed and didn't receive. No, maybe you didn't receive what you want, but you received other things. Or, I knocked and the door didn't open. No, it will open. He did not say when. It, w it will open means it will open. These simple verses need to be thought about very carefully because in the moment you say, O Lord, and make any request, be assured that he is listening. He will probably give you something better than what you asked for. And maybe he will give you what you asked for. The first type of trust is the trust that God is listening. Maybe people don't pay attention to the fact that God is listening to them while they're praying. However, this is a promise from God. Whatever you say, even if you're a babbling baby, he, he, he hears you very well. I'm not talking about trust when it comes to the response. I'm talking about trust that God is listening. You know when someone is talking on their cell phone, this happens to me sometimes, and they'll be talking and talking and talking, and they suddenly realize that the line cut a while ago, and I was talking this whole time. It's annoying, and I don't know up to what point the other person heard. This concept doesn't exist with God. The line doesn't break. Any talk, even if it's empty words that you say, he hears it and hears it well. Every prayer is heard, and God pays close attention. This is God we're talking about, the most important person in the world. So you say empty words, you complain, you say hurtful things. He hears all of it and is paying close attention. When he responds and how he will respond is a different matter. From the point of listening, though, he is listening. This point makes a difference. It is important to review it every now and then. Are you listening to me? Yes, I'm listening, my beloved. Continue. So assure me, I hear you. I do not need to respond right now, but I hear you. There's a beautiful verse in the Psalms in the Agbeya, the Coptic Orthodox Book of Prayers. I will confess you, O Lord, with my whole heart, not because you answered me, because you heard all the words of my mouth. Many people are lonely. They are lonely by themselves or in society. Socially, it means that there, are, there is no one living with them. They live in their house by themselves. Being lonely by themselves means that they live amongst people, but these people don't feel their presence. And this is very common. 
The one person who will hear you at any moment in anything you say is our Lord with all the focus and attention that you need. This is something that brings happiness. Because of this, try to bring people to the Lord. We get really bothered when we can't find someone to listen to us. It affects us negatively when the people who are with us are annoyed from us or they've heard a bit and then they don't want to hear anymore. What you don't realize is that there is someone more important than this person and is closer than they are and is prepared to listen even if you go on and on and talk for a year. He doesn't have any problem with it. One time an elderly father said to me, I've gotten old. Sometimes I talk a lot and don't pay attention to my kids that can't stand me. He felt that his kids are criticizing him. Dad, you already said this. You already asked this question. I told him, do you know who doesn't, e doesn't ever get bored? Even if you keep repeating what you say, our Lord, talk to him. Put your cares on him. He will never tell you, you already said that. No, he won't say that. He doesn't have any problem with it at all. Say it again, my beloved. Say it again. If you want to say it again, say it again. Say it three times. Say it five times. And if you ask a question and he, and he answers you, and you go back to ask the same question, he also will not mind at all. All our Lord wants is that you continue speaking with him. Even if you're saying useless words, even if you keep repeating the same questions, he doesn't mind. It's better to him that you spend time with him and talk with him. It doesn't matter how important the issue is. What matters is spending time with God and talking to him. If we, want to, if we want to be sure that God is listening, do you think that God does not hear the cries from the world's churches over the past several weeks, from the smallest one to the biggest one? Of course he hears. He hears and is paying attention. These are the cries of his children, his most precious people. He did not get involved because this is what was better. There is no explanation. That means this is what's best for the church right now. There's no other way to understand it. We are struggling to hold on to God and want him to intervene, but he sees something better for us, for us. When it comes to listening, we cannot doubt for a moment. Even if the words that are in your heart were not said out loud, he still hears them. Sometimes what is expressed by sobbing cannot be expressed with words. May we be assured of this because this will comfort us. Is there someone who hears you? Yes, he hears you very well. In another psalm it says, For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. Meaning, God knows everything that I say completely. St. Paul taught us when he explained faith and trust, he said that faith is trust. He said something very beautiful. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you pray, it is not as if you are just talking to yourself. No, you're talking to a person. The beginning of faith is that you are sure that he is listening and that he is paying attention to what you're saying. Those who go to God must believe that he is there and that he is listening. Or else, why would you pray? Why would you go to God or to church if he, if he is not there or he is not paying attention or listening? Every sim simple farmer who goes to church, even if he does not know how to read and write, has strong faith. So when he says, O Lord, he knows he is heard and his prayers are received. So the first thing is trust in listening. I trust, Lord, that you are listening to me. You are listening to my complaints, my confessions, my pains, my thanks, my tears, my struggles. You hear me. So long as I am assured of this, half of the, the issue is taken off. Today, in psychology, they say that a good counselor is not one who provides a solution. 70% of what a good counselor is, is one who listens well. If they listen, what they call active listening, meaning they're not just hearing and that's it, but they are really listening, focusing, then the other person will be assured even if a solution is not given. When it comes to God, doing this is easy. We know this, we just need to be reminded of it now and then.